going here. <laughs> um, so hope everybody is doing well today. Uh, we wanted to go ahead and uh, kick things off for this week's live training, which is, of course, overcoming the biggest challenges in dental. Uh, in 2023, we're all hearing uh, the recession word, and we, we don't know whether it's coming, whether it's not coming. Um, so the best thing to do is to be prepared, um, invest in yourself, uh, your, your uh, practice, uh, you know, and of course, taking this time with us is uh, very much appreciated. And uh, the goal here is to provide you guys with the tools, resources, knowledge uh, that we see trending and, and helping people right now. With that being said, I know Wendy's prepared some stuff for us today. So I'll let her go ahead and uh, kind of um, introduce herself and also what we'll be covering today. Go ahead, Wendy. All right. Thank you, Fimo. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Come on now. All right. So, hey, everybody. Uh, welcome back again, and we got a great topic we're going to talk about today. Uh, how to overcome the biggest uh, the biggest challenge that is with every dental practice uh, in the uh, United States uh, this time. As uh, Vimal said, you know there's a lot going on out there with the economy, and I'm going to show you today how you're never going to have to worry about that again, hands down. If you just do the things that we're talking about on these trainings. So before we kind of dig into all that, I wanted just to remind you, for those in case there's some new folks that are watching this, uh, my name is Wendy Richmond. I am a Grant Cardone licensee, 10X certified sales trainer, speaker, and coach. I'm also 10X on the marketing side certified. And I want to make sure, <laughs> excuse me, that uh, you all understand who Grant Cardone is, right? Because just me being certified with Grant Cardone, a lot of you still might not even know who he is. So I'll tell you about him in just a second. But I also, other than being, you know, a 10X certified sales trainer, uh, the thing that I have as my background is that I have been a marketing director for several multi-million dollar dental practices over the last basically nine years. And so I've now accumulated all of these things that have helped my practices over these nine years, plus adding on top of it all the wonderful things and all the, uh, the strategies and content that, uh, uh, that Grant Cardone has. So uh, that's how we're kind of combining them all. Uh, and then, of course, working with Cobia and Vemo and Meg Megan and all, all the folks at Cobia. I'm telling you, this is like it'll, hands down. It will totally uh, set you up in this, uh, in this new year. So first off, I'm going to share my screen just so you can see uh, who, let's remind everybody who Grant Cardone is. And again, it's going to be very important as far as the topic today. So Grant Cardone actually is the, uh, I mean, if you look at, this is just some, I mean, now he's even more than what you see right here. But the, the one thing that he's known for, one of the biggest things, and if you could see See if I can put it here. It's called the 10X Rule. He wrote a book called the 10X Rule. This is what this whole 10X thing is all about. And so if you don't have this book, it's a book to go get, whether you uh, read it or audio book. It's a great book. And it'll, it'll really hone in to all these things that we're talking about here today. But the thing I want you to see when it comes to Grant is over here, when it comes to Forbes. Forbes named him the top social media mark and marketing influencer in the world. Okay, so I want you to remember that for when we get to the topic at hand today, when it comes to overcoming the biggest challenge that you have. Now, before we get into all that, what I want to make sure is that we're all on the same page when it comes to what exactly is 10x? What does this really mean? Why am I so pumped about it? Why is, is uh, Vimo and Megan and everywhere so pumped about 10x? And I do this all the time because uh, well, I'm going to actually let Grant talk to you about what 10X means and then make sure we're all on the same page and then we're going to get right into the topic. But this is so important as far as getting everybody, whether uh, you uh, and or the other members of your team, all on the same page as to what it means. So let's listen to Grant and I'll make it bigger so everybody can see it. 
Hey, let's suppose you want one thing, okay? If you take massive action equal to at least 10 times what you think that one thing would take, you know, how much you'd have to do to attain that one thing, if you took 10 times more action than you thought was necessary, would you be certain, guaranteed to get that one thing? This is how you want to start operating, okay? Look, if you do 10x of what you think it's going to take, you can give up hope. You don't have to hope, wish, cross your fingers like a little seven-year-old, please, please, please bring it to me. You don't have to depend on others anymore, and you won't have to pray, okay? Because what you want, and far more, will come when you take the right amount of action. It's called the 10x rule. A salesperson once told me, Man, Grant, I got so much bad luck right now, you know. You know, everybody that I work with gets turned down in finance, okay? And then, then he tells me, all my appointments cancel. I mean, he's just like, bah, 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 you know, and I'm like, dude, look, you're not doing, taking enough action. He's like, what? No, man, my luck's bad right now. Buyer backed out. Another customer had to change his order and blah, blah, blah. You know, you ever been here? Good. I said, look, your problem is not bad luck or misfortune. Your problem is not that you're born on the wrong side of the tracks or whatever other excuses you use, okay? Your problem is you don't have enough in your pipeline. See, you want, you want, to, you want so much in your pipeline, man, that people canceling appointments would be, oh, my gosh, I'm so glad he canceled. It helps me. See, right now when somebody cancels, oh, my gosh, you have nobody to talk to. When I have somebody canceled, I'm like, that's cool, okay, because i got two more people. I can put my full attention on them. See, I suggest to you that if you took 10 times more action than you're taking right now, if he took 10 times more action, he'd have no attention on these so-called misfortunes and would actually welcome the canceled appointment. You get it? If you take enough action and are getting results, then it's no big deal when one appointment cancels or when one buyer backs out or when you can't get some funding or you didn't get that one listing or whatever the case is. It's like, oh, that's cool, man. I I've taken enough action. I'm safety netted. In fact, you'll welcome some of these occasional old cancellations that you thought were problems. Look, if you take small amounts of action, what's going to happen? Every time you lose that one appointment or that one deal, you're going to move into like, you're going to just literally start collapsing. Oh my gosh, misfortune, loss, bad luck. See, because you're so dependent upon that one deal. You don't have anything to replace that one deal with. Why? Because you didn't take enough action. You put too much attention on too little. You get it? You want your, your attention, your full attention on massive amounts of action, knowing that if I take enough action, Okay, I'm going to get results. An associate of mine watched me call a client. Okay, in three days without a return phone call, I called this man 15 times. You understand? Never returned my phone call. All 15 times I'm on my phone. Okay, I'm texting the guy. Hey, give me a call when you get a chance. Three minutes later, call him. Hey, Kent, Grant Cardone goes to voicemail. I leave a message 15 times. Texas, emails, in addition to the phone calls, Texas, emails, sending video clips. This guy says, man, Grant, you think that's too much? I said, no, I don't think it's too much. Why do you say that? I said, in fact, if anything, it's not enough because I haven't gotten a result yet. See, I want to get something done, so I keep taking action, extraordinary, unreasonable levels of action, massive action, because I'm not reasonable. Reasonable. Reasonable is logical, right? Grant, be reasonable. No, don't. Don't be reasonable when it comes to taking action. Never, ever be reasonable. Just take more action. Now, I know this sounds crazy to you because, you know, basically America and this planet has been convinced to be reasonable, to not be extraordinary. And that's how you create a middle class. Convince enough people not to do anything and you'll have 300 million people sitting on a sofa buying stuff over, over TV rather than out in the marketplace moving, shaking, and making things happen. Look, you want to get almost insane with the amount of action you take in order to get the job done. That's right, insane, without reason, like a madman, okay? Crazy, okay? You don't need two shots of tequila to get here, okay? You need to get there out of your own decision because I act insane in my actions does not make me insane as long as I know what I'm doing. See, a realtor, let's say a realtor wants a listing. Should he call 100 people or one or two? If you want appointments, call every friend you have. Call every past client. 
Stop people on the street. Do whatever it takes. Be mad without reason, insane in how much action you take. Once you're greatly successful, people will look back and say, man, that guy, that guy went all the way. He wasn't lucky. And maybe he was lucky. Why would he be lucky? Because he took so much action, like a crazy man, right? See, in no time, if you take the right amount of action and follow it up with more action, you'll be overflowing with appointments, you'll be overflowing with sales, and you will have success. So act like a madman or a mad woman or a crazy person would when they have to have something. You know, your children do this. Seven-year-old kid, he'll tear the freaking store down to get what he wants. Is that bad? No, don't medicate the kid. Reward him, okay? Why? He's doing what's necessary in today's marketplace to get what you want. When it comes to action, get unreasonable about what you think. Get unreasonable about what you need to do to get the job done. Be without sanity or logic or reason when it comes to taking massive amounts of action. And you will reach heights that I promise you that you have only dreamed of. Massive action first equals what? New problems. Then it will always equal big sales. All right, all right. So let's stop that share for a second now. So here's the thing, right? When it comes to, I mean, if, if he didn't pound that into you, this whole idea of massive action, and it's one of the things that I have found when it comes to the clients that I've worked with over the years, it's like they all have this in common. And when it comes to this whole massive action. So we'll talk about that in just a, a couple of minutes, how it relates to what we're talking about today. But I want to do a quick little ex exercise with everybody. So for those of you, do me a favor. Uh, and if you have a piece of paper in front of you, what I want you to do is I want you to write down what are your revenue goals for 2023? What are your revenue goals? Put that number down on a piece of paper. Okay. And then when you have that number down, just, uh, you know, put a, put a one in the chat so I know that everybody's done this. Right. You should, all, I'm sure all, everybody has a goal for the year that they want to make as far as revenue goes for the office, the revenue goals. So just give me a one in the chat. I got some ones. Yep. There we go. All right. Very cool. Who's brave enough to share their revenue goal? <laughs> Anybody? <laughs> That's okay. They're thinking about it. Maybe they'll put it in here. But here's what I want you to do. Again, with the 10x mentality, this is what you do. Whatever goal you wrote down, add a zero on the end of it. Just do it. Even if it's like, oh my God, it's out of this world, off the planet, off the charts. Oh my gosh. Don't worry about how you're going to get there. That's what our job is to help you get there. But the fact that you wrote a goal, Put a zero on the end of it. Here's what, again, when you talk about 10X mentality. Most people, when they set their revenue goals for the year, most people and offices don't necessarily hit them. Or they might just barely hit them or just barely miss them. Okay, Because they do a certain amount of activity. They do a certain amount of things that will set them to hit that goal. Now, if you put a zero on the end of that, so let's just say, and again, just to make easy numbers. So say you said, I want to I wanna take home 100,000 this year, okay? Again, I'm just doing easy numbers. So you add a zero on the end of that, that makes it a million. Now, when you're looking at the million goal, you're going to do a lot more things. You're going to take a lot more massive action to hit the million than you would ever do to hit the 100,000. Now, even if you miss the million, you're going to blow past the 100,000, okay? So this is what we want to get you in the thought process of this whole taking massive action, 10x level actions. It's going to take you 10 times more activity to get, yes, think way bigger. Absolutely. It's going to take 10 times more action to get you where you want to go than you think it does. So just get in the habit of doing that. And I'm telling you, your, your, your mind will be blown as to what you'll be able to accomplish. Okay. Now, so let's get on to exactly what we're talking about as far as like the biggest challenge when it comes to a dental practice. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you three videos, okay? 
The first video is actually Grant Cardone talking with Jared Glant, who is his right-hand guy, is the president of his company. And they're gonna talk about three things. And then we're gonna watch another couple of videos and then we'll kind of pull it all together. And then we've got a nice exercise for you to do as well, okay? So I'm gonna share my screen again. So you can, uh, let's watch these videos and we'll go from there, okay? Talk today. Talk today about the most expensive things that you're doing in sales, the things that are costing you the most money. And these are things that have nothing to do with the actual sales process. But everything to do with the sales process. And everything to do with making money. Nothing and everything. What would that be? Anyway? The number one most expensive thing as a salesperson, as a business owner, as a person on planet Earth, the thing that costs you more money than anything is that people have no idea who you are. Dude, you don't exist. Who are you? People say, man, people buy from people they trust. People buy from people they know. Listen to what I'm telling you right now. This is where, Brian, Brian, what's his name, my buddy, Tom Hopkins had it yeah. wrong. He's like, people buy from people they trust. And no, no, people buy from people they know because if they don't know you. They can't trust you. Oh, come on. <laughs> Even if you're the most honest person in the room. If you want to go swimming, you got to go to the swimming pool. You got to go to the pool. If you want to get some sun, you got to go outside. You got to get some if sun. If you want to change the number of people that know you, you have to go where people get to know you. The second thing, which is also what he's talking about, is you don't get around qualified prospects. Uh, so, uh. you know, there's this thing that's been going around that's like, hey, you're the sum of the five people around you. Before you need to worry about that, you need to get around five customers. Yeah, That's yeah, yeah. like step one. Yeah, Jim Rohn said, Jim Rohn was made famous for saying, hey, you are the accumulation <laughs> summation of the five people you spend the most time with. I'm like, dude, I spend all my time with customers. You gotta get around these people. The like, third thing is, how well, how are you gonna make attention for those introverts out there, mm -hmm. for the shy people, for the people that stumble when you talk? You're gonna have to learn how to make a pitch, mm -hmm. how to make an impression. Three things have to happen. You gotta be in the room, mm -hmm. two, you got to see who's in the room. Three, you got to make an impact. All right, so that's one. And again, we'll pull it all together. These other ones are short as well. So I just want you to, and then you'll see how it all plays together with our topic today. Your, your name means anything to me. So even though you have a channel, by the time I find out your name, I go to look for you online and I can't find you. So number one, obscurity level number one, biggest problem in social selling is I don't know you. Remember this, if I don't know you, hey, I can't flow you. All right, so remember that saying, that's a great saying. If I don't know you, I can't flow you. All right, let's watch the last one. Right? My job is to get 8 billion people to know me. So now people know me, they'll buy from me. How do you do that? I, I'm not going to be, I'm not, I'm not going to be a slave to one person or one vertical or one niche or one partnership. All right. I, I have, you guys have the whole world at your access. Sorry about that. Right? My job is to get 8 billion people to know me. If enough people know me, they'll buy from me. How many believe that? I, I'm not going to be I'm not going to be a slave to one person or one vertical or one niche or one partnership. I, I have you guys have the whole world at your access, the whole world. And by the way, if you can't get South Korea to talk about you, you can't get South Indiana or Indianapolis to talk about you. There's people in Korea that are tied to Hawaii, that are tied to Columbia, that know somebody in Indiana, and it can just bang out like that. And I also believe that if I could get enough people to know me in one market, I think that there's something that actually happens. I think if you could out, if you could get, if you could push out enough frequency about your brand, yourself, your ideas to enough people that you hit some critical mass. I don't, I don't know if any of you agree with this, but I think there's a spiritual component to where if you can vibrate through enough, all of a sudden other people start thinking, I know that dude. I've said this for years, if I can get enough people, a very small percentage of the population to know me, I think the other 99% become convinced they know me. I don't know if that's true or not, but I know that we go places today where people give me this look like, dude, I think I've seen you, okay? 
uh, we flew into Malta, into Malta. Malta is, I didn't even know that the, the Malta was a country. I thought it was a malt ball. I thought I was misreading it on the map. I'm like, dude, what do they do there? They make malt balls. There's like, no, it's a country called Malta. It's just south of Sicily. We flew into Malta, got in at 12.30 at night. There's five people in Malta waiting for us at the airport at one o'clock in the morning. I, we've never marketed to Malta. How many of you don't know where Malta is? Exactly. So it's a little tiny country just south of Sicily. It's about that big, literally about that big. If I'm in business, any kind of business, I'm in the fitness business, okay? I'm a trainer, I'm a trainer. I do training in Miami. I want people in Malta to know who I am. Um, do you think that somebody needs to reach a certain like status before building no, a person? No, 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 you do not need to reach a certain stat status. You need to assume the status now. You need to have the altitude right now to be the professional that says, hey, I know about fitness. Right. I know about plumbing. I know about trucks. Just take whatever you guys are certain about and post the shit out of it. And by the way, if you're not certain about it, write an article about what your uncertainty is costing you. You're gonna figure out every possible angle, but none of that's gonna happen until you guys make a decision to blow up. And none of the blow up shit's gonna happen until you make a decision that money is important. Because if you got people around you saying money's not important, ain't no way you're gonna do this stuff. Because it hurts when nobody sees your stuff. It hurts when you got five people following. You're like, dude, why am I doing a live stream on, right, Dave, you've done it before. I'm doing a video live stream and there's one person watching. What the hell, I'm stupid. How many done a live stream before? You're sitting there talking to a phone and you're like, this is stupid. <laughs> Shit, I think I'm gonna go be with my kids. No, that's stupid. Being with a six-year-old and an eight-year-old that can't buy from you is dumb. You're better off being with one person that might be able to buy from you because you ain't going to build 10 without going to one and you ain't going to get to 100 without going to 10 and you ain't going to get to 10,000 without getting some haters and you ain't going to even figure it out for three or four years guarantee you and if you don't figure this out it's going to cost you every chance you have a financial freedom all right all right, all right. so okay so what does this mean? What does this mean? What, what are we talking about here? If you got the, the underlying, what, what Grant was talking about, the biggest challenge with every dental practice in the world, in the US, is obscurity. Nobody knows who you are. Not enough people know who you are. And then there's another piece of obscurity. So one is people don't know you, but the other piece, people, uh, people don't remember you. So you're forgotten. So just because they know you one minute doesn't mean that when the time is right, they don't, like when they need a dentist, who are they gonna go to? If they can't remember you, if they didn't see you on social, if they didn't see you on TikTok, if they didn't see you, right? They're not gonna remember who you are. So the thing that uh, getting out of obscurity, right? Uh, it's, it's one of the, the biggest, uh, challenges, yet it's one of the easiest things that you can do. So we're going to do a little exercise now because, uh, and I'll just tell you an example. So I have one of my, one of my clients is he collects a million uh, dollars a month. He's a fee-for-service office and he collects a million dollars a month. Okay. One office. And the thing is what he did that he finally understood was that he had to massively push out and continue to push out uh, content, push out ads, push out everything that he could before and afters, all kinds of education. So people would know that he's the guy and he's known for big cases. So how he gets known about big cases is that he educates about big cases, he shows video patient testimonials about big cases. He does before and afters about big cases, right? So his whole practice revolves around the fact that he's the guy and he is the expert in this area, in this market, like Grant said, get enough people to know you in one market, then you are the person that they're going to go to when it's their time for whatever it is that the service that you offer right? Whatever treatment is your thing. So what I want to do, right, is uh, let's do something. I want to do, uh, I'm going to give this to everybody. I'll put it in the, let me share my screen again here. 
Uh, and I will make sure I will give it to everybody as well. So let me make sure I got the right thing here. All right, so we're gonna go. Oh, this is a good way. Here. Hey, Wendy, while you pull that up, I wanted to mention uh, a couple things. Uh, we are going to help you guys in terms of getting the word out there uh, and, and making it a multi-channel approach. Uh, so part of you know what we're going to be doing here is coming up with some things that we can use in order to start developing your identity. Um, and the things that you have to think about here is influence starts uh, small. It starts in small circles and it, it starts with you believing in a certain identity. And one of the biggest things that I see uh, dentists make a mistake with is we ask them, what are your unique propositions or, you know, what do you want to be known for? And I want to say 95% of the time we get the same three answers. It's uh, the quality of work, right? The affordability um, and the friendly staff. Those are those are the the three most common things you always hear. Well, we're extremely friendly. We have extremely high quality work, and and the technology. And most dentist offices that you're going to compete against uh, are going to have those three things by default: um, a friendly staff, good technology, and high quality work. Uh, you know, if they and if they don't have it, they're not going to advertise that they have bad quality work, not a lot of technology, um, or that their staff is mean. So. Saying those things are not differentiators um, that are are big enough to really build a brand around and make a, people be drawn to you. So uh, when you think about this, uh, when Wendy goes through this with you, um, as as tough as it is, really try and dig in and go outside of one of those three things. Uh, you know, quality of work, technology, and and. Um, your friendly staff and and see what else you know you really bring to the table and uh we're going to use that to highlight it in your in your upcoming marketing um and we're also going to have you guys write uh your perfect review um so this is you know five years from now if if you uh were seeing a review about yourself and it was to give you the most level of fulfillment and satisfaction what would that review say and and that's who we're going to try and, and get out there and help create and create that influence so you can bring those people to you. Yep, absolutely. And here's the thing too, you know, working with, um, you know, marketing, right. And marketing companies and, and like Cobia, you know, the, the more you can hone in and know these things, the answers to these, it's going to help on the marketing side, it makes it so much easier. So let me give you again, another couple of examples, but let me make sure you understand that we get these sayings from Grant. So basically one of his big sayings is, if they don't know you, they can't flow you. Okay. So you got to get known and you got to stay getting known. And I want to actually kind of uh, talk about also last time that we talked about follow-up. Follow-up is the way that you stay remembered, right? So one is getting known, but another one is getting remembered. So that's what all the follow-up is. That really plays nicely into getting remembered, okay? Because not everybody, when you put out marketing messages, are ready for you, right? They, they don't... Um, you know, especially say, for example, emergencies, right? If you're known for emergencies and you want them, you know, the, the, your local area to know about you, then that needs to be put everywhere. So when the time comes that somebody's having an emergency and they look up or they see a post or whatever they see, there's like, oh, I remember that's the office that does emergencies. I'm going to call them because I do top of mind, right? And then also what Grant talks about is money follows attention. So the more attention you can get in your marketplace, that's where more people know about you at all, and then more people come to your office. So I'm gonna give you another example of what is a unique selling proposition. Like I have, again, this one office is known for big cases, okay? And he's done a lot of work over the years where he's built on it step-by-step step to actually like, get his name out there, get the practice name. He wasn't even real big on himself. So you don't have to, if you're the dentist or someone and you're like, oh, I have to go out there. That's great if you can, 
but you don't need to. You just have to have the right approach and keep pushing out content and ads and all these kinds of wonderful things that are going out in your local market to be remembered. So you want to just make sure that you uh, uh, do attention and key big case. I have another office that's a holistic practice. Okay. So that was actually a lot easier than some of the other ones because they're holistic dentistry. So they can like, and, and what we did was just push out content after content. They did videos, they did all this stuff to educate about all the different pieces of holistic dentistry, why it's different, what it is, and how somebody can take advantage of that. So when it comes to what you all do, and oh, and I'll tell you one more because uh, we have an office that, uh, you know, doing real well and doing real well with the TikTok ads and all this. And they're known for, they have a specific kind of equipment. So they're a Yomi office, a Yomi robotic implant office. And so now they're pushing that out. And so they're gonna be known for Yomi big cases. That's the goal for this year. So they've got very, very, you know, uh, instead of like broad, they're very, the more tight you could get with what you wanna be known for, what makes you different and special. So what I'd like to do is kind of go through these. And this is something, you know, you don't do it just here now. You want to always be doing it, always be thinking about it. But really, what makes you all different, right? Why should someone come to your office? And like Vimal said, not just because you got the friendly staff or all these other things that everybody else can say, right? What is it? Is it the expertise that, you, you know, the dentist has been doing this for, you know, 30 years, got all these credentials, you know, that kind of thing? Is it that you have a specific treatment that you want to be known for? And you, what I always say as far as looking at 10x, right, and if you want to be known for a specific treatment, then you need to build out all the resources around that specific treatment. Don't go like, oh, well, we want to do cleanings. We want to do this. Nah. No, for at the beginning, in my opinion, you start with the end in mind. If you want to be known as the expert when it comes to full arch cases, you want to be known as the expert for implants or veneers or Invisalign, whatever it is, then what resources can you actually put together that prove to anybody who doesn't know you that you're the office to go to? So first and foremost, I want to make sure that you start writing and thinking about what makes you different. And I would just be curious in the chat, you know, uh, what uh, somebody, you know, put out what, like type in the chat, what's one thing that makes you different? I'd love to see that. Anybody got something? Let's see. Oh, and just so you know, and I'm going to keep talking while somebody's thinking about what they're going to write in there. Just so you understand too, the fact that you're on TikTok, for those of you on TikTok, makes you different, makes you different, right? And let me tell you, because of, you know, the one office that we know that is uh, uh, done so well with TikTok ads and is now known as a TikTok influencer in their area, yeah, 10X, let's go, right? It's something that, they, that people can latch on to. And there's proof in the office now. Thank you, Cobia Marketing, for that. And Megan. And now when people walk in, it's the first thing that uh, people see. And they're like, what? What's that? Again, attention. They're getting attention for something. So anybody in the, uh, can put in, in the chat, like, what's one thing that makes you all different? People are thinking. I don't know. I won't spend too much time on it, but we know if, if look, and I have to tell you this too, this is, this is showing my age, but nobody ever said what we're going to do here is going to be easy. Right. And so I have this saying that I got from a share. Those of you who know, you know, I know who share is. If you don't know who share is, you're way too young, but share did an ad back in the, I think in the eighties, maybe in the nineties, but she did it for Bali uh, fitness. And she said that, if it came in a bottle, everybody'd have a great body, okay? So what we're doing here, other offices just don't do this stuff. And so if it is a little challenging, yes, right? 
That's the growth. Get you out of your comfort zone. That's where the growth is. So I don't want to belabor the point, but just know you need to know what makes you different and you need to shout it over and over and over again. Okay. Now, what is, what are people seeing you at? What's your brand in the marketplace? Branding comes before advertising. It really does. Because if you don't know about your brand, who you are, what you do, what you stand for, whatever, then it makes it a lot harder to come up with messages to put out to your market. So I really want you to think about like, where do you think, what, what do people know you for right now? And do they know you at all? Okay. Now, what are you if, currently- Wendy, ahead, if I could yeah. just piggyback off that really quick. Absolutely. Um, you know, I know that a lot of times it can be hard to think about what, what exactly it is that makes us different. Um, and one of the things that I do want to bring to your attention is oftentimes- it's it's not some large monumental thing that makes you different or allows you to have that unique angle. So, it you know the technology is is really is really cool. But uh, you know one thing that I can say, especially for our agency, is we are now known as the TikTok marketing agency for dentists. And it's as simple as that. And uh, Along with that, we're known for doing the short form content. We're also one of the agencies that's known for actually calling and doing the level of follow up that we do. Um, that you know that's unique. There's very few people out there that do that, and so those are small things that are differentiators. And how we market that is, we don't say, "Hey, you're not going to have to call your leads." We say, "Never follow up again." So once once we take those little micro things that you do really really well. Even that are that are probably typically small, but just that most other people aren't doing, but it makes you unique. Um, for example, I, I work with an office and uh, we run a campaign for them for veneers. And one of the really simple things that they do is they actually take um, material and they will shape it, you know, into the form of the teeth, put it on the patient. Um, yeah, it takes about an hour for them to do it. Uh, but when they put it on and then they put that mirror in front of the patient, they have almost a hundred percent close rate. And that is, does take a little bit of extra time to like, you know, model up the teeth, put the composite, get it on there and show it to them. But that is time that's well invested And most dentists. They don't do that. They're not actually going to, to do that on that, that first appointment. And so something like that could be unique. Um, the fact that you do the 3d CT scans, um, you know, can be unique, uh, the, you know, so don't think too, too large. Let's look at what you guys do really well. What, what is it in the micro that people are really attracted to you about? And then we can, we can add the marketing spin to it. Yep, absolutely. And so for me, even again, looking at it, I'm known as I'm, I'm the 10 X girl, right? I'm the 10 X lady in my market. And I keep pushing that and pushing that. And one other thing, and again, looking at things that make you unique and different that are the easiest things to do. So I want to show you one thing because I'm going to do it right here, right now. All right, I'm going to show you. I'm not joking. All right, this is so easy that we're, I'm going to do it while we're on this call because I want to show you what you can do that takes nothing to do, but yet, um, let me see. Oh man, of course it's not going to, it's not going to come up. I can't get in. Ah, dang it. All right. I don't know if I can do it. Ah, oh, shoot. My phone doesn't have my Facebook like login easily accessible. Doggone it. Oh, well, but here's what you can do. And what I'm known for as well is doing Facebook lives, right? Anybody, you can walk around your office. You can do a quick little live stream that just says, Hey, we are Here's the name of our practice. I'm whoever I am, and we do this. And we're so excited. We have a patient right here. You can put a patient right in front and ask the patient, of course, if it's okay. But you could do just be known for doing Facebook Lives. And that alone will get you out of obscurity, right? It gets you attention. It gets you things that no one else is doing. And I guarantee you, no one else is doing it in your market, okay? So something as easy as, technology, social media today is the easiest thing and it's free and you can get out there and get something on it. And again, I'll go back to TikTok one more time is that, you know, we would never, 
like one of my practices, we'd never be working with Cobia if it wasn't for the fact that they do TikTok, right? And that's what makes them so unique and different. And, and not just that they do TikTok, but they do TikTok that works, okay? There's the difference, okay? And they're a great company to work with. So I like, so yeah, so what I'm gonna do now, spread the word about a company that does TikTok ads. I'm telling everybody about it because they need to, they need to differentiate themselves and just even like social media you're on is a differentiator, okay? So now, like, again, making lists of what it is that you're currently doing, right? What things are you doing on a consistent basis? And I have this approach, you know, being a marketing director for several multi-million dollar practices over the years, the one thing that I learned that is the key to all of this is taking a holistic approach to your marketing, okay? So it isn't just one thing. It's being seen everywhere that you can. And pushing out content, pushing out whether it's ads or it's posts or whatever it is, right? Getting a YouTube channel if you don't have it. Let me tell you, if you don't have YouTube now, you are missing out because Google owns YouTube. And you could be putting your video testimonials, all the content that you're talking about that, that positions you as the expert, video them easy, Put that all around your social, put it on your YouTube channel, tag it the right way. Next thing you know, when people Google, like if you want uh, uh, implants, right, and be known for implants. So people go Google implant dentist near me, depending on your competition, you, the video could pop up high on the first page, right? So there's lots of things that can be done as far as getting, spreading the word out on a holistic approach. So one of the things that I would look at is what are all the different things that you are doing, okay? And how can you make sure that the messaging is all around what positions you as the expert, okay? And then if you're not doing certain things, and this is what Vimal and, and his group will work with you on, is like, well, what are some other things that we can do that we're not doing that we could then push out what makes us unique and different, okay? All right. And then also looking at, you know, what are you not doing? Or, you know, what are the things that you're doing that's not giving you anything, right? Are you pushing money down something that is absolutely not giving you any kind of return? Now, there's one thing to put it out on social, right? Those types of things. But it's like, well, what is like nothing? Are you spending money and getting absolutely nothing back? Well, those are things you need to look at as well, okay? So um, I'd love to like, if anybody has any questions, or did somebody put in the chat? Hey, Wendy, while uh, you take a look at the chat, I just wanted to make a few comments. Uh, if you don't have a social media consent form um, in your office, or you'd like to uh, compare what you have now uh, with, with a standardized one, we will definitely uh, get that sent out. Just go ahead and drop a one in the chat if that's something that you want. And we'll go ahead and take that down and make sure I know Dr. Alfredo, uh, we will get one out to you as well too. Um, in reference to the, the branding, uh, it, it's definitely something that you want to think about when you're advertising, because the biggest thing is consistency. Um, you want the same message and you want to establish that message and you want to be well known for that. So oftentimes, a lot of people really struggle with this. And one big piece of advice I like to give is um, start by looking at your competitors. Uh, you know, if it, and I don't mean direct competitors, I'm talking about people who are doing the same thing that you want to do, but are doing it better at a, and on a bigger scale. And if you can kind of get an idea of what gaps you have between what they're doing and what you're doing, then we can formulate a plan in order to fill in those gaps. And so if you're really struggling and thinking, uh, how do I get started around um, understanding what I should do or, or what I'm not doing, um, find somebody that you know does well uh, and and start modeling them and and understanding what gaps you need to fill. And oftentimes uh, it'll become extremely apparent. Um, and it's usually the small things and uh, we can help you kind of uh, drill down on that. Yep, absolutely. 
And, and so uh, when it comes to, you know, getting out of obscurity, so I just want to remind you again, it's you have to get known. People have to know you and they have to consistently see you. And, and I know, I'm sure you've heard this from other marketing companies, they have to see you so many times or whatever. And the fact is they have to see you all the time, everywhere. You know your marketing is right and you're getting out of obscurity when somebody calls the office and your person who answers says, how did you hear about us? Or how did you first hear about us? And they say, well, I have my sister goes there, but I saw you on Facebook. Or uh, uh, I, I Googled you uh, and then I saw you on Facebook too. When they tell you that they've seen you in multiple places, you're hitting it because that's what you need. And something as easy as, look, um, I want to make it as simple as possible without overwhelming. But one easy thing that you can do, of course, was the Facebook Live, right? So getting used to getting out there and pushing out and just getting in front of a camera. Look, one of my offices, uh, no joke, all right? Well, the, uh, one of my offices, the main dentist um, is not, his first language is not English. But they understood the power of getting a video. And today, everybody's about video. So one of the things that most people are usually and most dent practices are missing out on, they're not doing video or they're not doing enough video. So he knew, right, that he had to get on camera because it was just the kind of practice that they were. It was revolving around him. And so no joke, they had in their dental office or like upstairs in a, in a spare office, they, and they couldn't find a good backdrop. So they went and bought a shower curtain and it was a shower curtain. And then they hung it up, you know, with some bars, those uh, tension bars. And he just sat in front of it. We put a camera on him and all he did was talk about, let me give you an easy thing that you can do as far as content goes, is he did the frequently asked questions, the top 10 frequently asked questions about whatever service, right? So think about this. You wanna be known for implants, okay? Well, the person who educates, the, the practice that educates the most is the one that's going to win. I guarantee education and putting that out as far as ads and getting known in the market. So you could just sit in front of the camera and talk about the top 10 frequently asked questions about implants. And just say, number one is this, blah, blah, blah. Number two, number 10. So now, just so you know, you've got 10 pieces of content that can be then cut up and placed around everywhere. So that's one, but let me give you one more level. Gotta, gotta give you something you can take with you. One more level of this is doing the top 10 should ask questions, okay? Why should ask? Well, because most people, I tell you, I'm, I'm, and I know, I do all what I do, but do I know everything about implants? I do not. I, and most people don't know anything about implants. And even if they go and look it up online, they still don't understand anything about implants, for example. So if you are the dentist or the office that talks about the should ask questions and you write like should ask questions because nobody knows what they don't know. So you're educating them on what they should know. You know the answers to the should ask questions. You can position yourself against all your competitors based on what you know your competitors aren't doing, that you are doing, that they aren't asking about. Okay, so these are like easy ways that you can create content to push out to get you out of obscurity very, very quickly. And that's the, the cool thing about, let me tell you, minimally, do TikTok ads, minimally. Then you're known as the TikTok influencer in your area. Come on, that's 10X right there. That is 10X, please. So I could go on and on. And but does anybody have any questions? I'm here. We're here. We can answer your questions. This is a great time for that. Wendy, while uh, if anybody thinks they have any questions, one thing I did want to mention is um, if you guys have received one of your um, your TikTok famous awards, uh, that is, we've received feedback that that is an absolute conversation starter, um, you know, having that displayed or at least in the office um, immediately kind of makes you relatable and brings down the guard of the patient a lot, especially when they say like, what's this from TikTok? You can kind of explain, um, you know, hey, we're on there. 
it, and immediately they uh, have a different um, perspective and a different uh, angle that they're going to speak to you on and you're going to be able to relate with them. And that is uh, something I highly recommend. Um, if you haven't gotten your TikTok plaque yet, uh, you can definitely reach out to Megan. Um, there's a few things that you have to hit in terms of milestones um, around case accepted and, uh, and time on the program, things like that. But um, we can get more into that. Uh, I have a question, Wendy, in terms of obscurity, if no one else uh, is, is going to go. Absolutely. Okay, cool. So, um, you know, the, statistically, one of the, one of the things in terms of uh, dental is, is there's one dentist for every 60,000 people, right? And um, if you look at the way the population is, is kind of dispersed, um, you know, whether a general dentistry really has the most amount of saturation. Um, and so if you look at, uh, you know, outside of general dentistry, where, what do you see being good profit levers inside of a practice um, that people may want to think about in, in terms of their USPs, um, in terms of services, uh, procedures, uh, and things like that? Uh, well, the ones that, you know, predominantly I've seen over the years are implants. Absolutely. Right. If you don't do implants in your office, figure out a way to do them or bring someone else in who can do them. And I've had that time and time again as well. Partner with another uh, practitioner around who can come in and just even one day a week, then you can start saying that you do implants, right? And I know, um, and again, when you get into full arches, not everybody does full arches, uh, all in fours, all in sixes. I mean, that one is just, and because the offices that I work with are all fee-for-service offices, no insurance. And most insurances don't cover the implants anyway. And then if you think about a full arch case, how much those start at, if you do your marketing properly, and you have everything else in place and positioning and branding that and you're known as the full arch office, let me tell you, people will come to you. And that's where, again, uh, a lot of my offices, uh, they, they go to those types of services. And then lastly would be like a smile makeover, right? And um, uh, most, on the, even on the smile makeover side, though, in cosmetic dentistry, there's still people are coming in with implants. I mean, it really is an implant world. And you'd be amazed how many people are in need of implants because now it's gotten a lot easier to do them and there's a lot more information about them. Uh, so implants is kind of like, I would say the, the biggest one for sure. Okay, great. And um, in terms of fee for service, I know that that's one of the more, uh, you know, profitable ways to run the dental practice, obviously you can kind of call your own shots and, um, you don't have to really be, uh, wait on the insurance company payout, so on and so forth. Um, the people who are utilizing the, that the best, they typically have a really defined process in terms of, you know, how they deal with patients, um, you know, how they're presenting treatment. Can you kind of walk through that, um, and kind of point out and highlight some of the things that you see, some of these fee-for-service offices doing really well in order to maximize each patient? Well, sure. I mean, it first really comes down to getting known for that, okay? Your brand, your positioning in the market, and building all the resources, whether they're on your website, getting video testimonials from your patients is key to anything and especially on the implant side, being able to show before and afters is key uh, to uh, uh, positioning yourself. So when you put out enough messages out first, right, and you flood the market with all of these messages that when people come in the door, they're pre-framed, like that you're the office. So they already feel comfortable before they even walk in the office that you're the right office. Now, it also depends on how they're talked to before, depending on what kind of marketing you're doing. So say, for example, if you're doing a TikTok type of marketing, a lead-centered marketing, right? Then you, it's what's that first experience with the practice? Those people on the phone are key 
to having a really good conversation with someone, asking the right questions, making them feel comfortable, and then in finding a convenient time for them to come in. Key. And then, of course, the follow-up, right? Big key to get them to show up in the office. But here's the thing. If you remember back to what Grant said, he talked about, I would rather have too many people in my pipeline, too many people scheduled, and then have half of them show, even three quarters of them not show, I'm sorry. And I don't care because my million a month practice, no joke. He schedules 400 a month, 200 show up, and he knows of the 200, he's going to make his number. Even with a 50% show rate, he doesn't care. He blocks it off. The ones that show, they've got their mind wrapped around the fact that it's okay if people don't show, because that's the nature of the beast. Nobody wants to go to the dentist. Nobody wants to go to a, a, a new dentist. And nobody wants to go get an implant, right? So, and, and just, or any treatments. So you just have to wrap your head around that, okay, this 10x activity, 10x the number of new patients that come in. And it's okay, because we have the numbers. And it's the same on the back end. So when they are the treatment coordinators are working right with so many people it's really about of course the process the new patient experience all those types of things right and how the dentist talks to them you know there's there's every every step of the process is important because one step of the process can make somebody say i'm not going to do it but then even after the fact because not everybody says yes on the first go round right so you have to follow up and that's what we talked about last time and why follow-up is so important. And he's got his follow-up down so that he's like over time, it didn't take him, look, it didn't take him overnight. It took him a few years to get the process down, but he is so thankful for all the effort that he put in. That's amazing. Um, one of the things, I don't know if you, we just have just a few minutes left, but if you could kind of give us a little insight into is how are they managing the schedule? Because obviously protecting chair time and making sure that you're maximizing that is extremely important uh, for a dental office. So what process are they using in terms of booking or what are, what in particular are they doing with their schedule so that they can overbook um, and get a good idea of what the day is going to look like in terms of no-shows and, and how are they managing that properly? Uh, that's a great question. So every one of them has, they have a, just a separate column and they just schedule them, on, they side book them. Okay, because they don't know who's really going to show up. So they side book them all day and they just are, even if more than one shows up, I mean, they still give them like in, in half an hour. I mean, the million a month dentist knows, I give them a half hour, right? Knowing that even if they show up, they can be able to take care of them. That's fine. But we just book them in half hours. And if he schedules, 10 people a day and only five show up, it's okay because they have enough staff. They've got, they've just got it down with the right mentality. And I think the staff have to be on board with this as well, because you, you could, you know, cause they could wig out over the fact that, oh my God, two people showed up at once. Well, that's great, right? It's a good thing. Instead of a bad thing, it's a good thing. And that's a new problem. Grant even said, when you do 10 X activity, you get more problems, you get different problems. You don't want the same problems, you want new problems. So if the new problems is how to deal with two new patients that come in for big cases, for example, or for implants or whatever, you deal with it and you figure out the system from there once you, but you gotta have your head around it that this could happen, but it's okay. We don't take any chair time away. They come in, they show, we take care of them the best way we can. That's amazing. Um, I think for us in particular as well, too, what we've seen across all of our practices is the ones that have the least amount of friction around booking. Um, they open up their schedule, uh, they double, triple book, and they accommodate people as they come in. They have a good point of contact that's like, hey, if someone shows up and they're here for this, you know, we sit them down, we triage them. And, and they're able to manage that flow because just because someone is on the schedule and you said you would do a consultation doesn't mean you have to pull the doctor in. You have to pull the doctor in if things are have progressed to that point and you have a quality candidate. Otherwise, your, your treatment coordinator and your staff need to have that understanding that um, they can you know see it through, they can get this person you know what they've been promised and they can get them out the door 
without having to cause a big scene or for there to be an issue or for the doctor even having to know what occurred. And, and those teams are really, really strong and they, they do extremely well. So um, we'll, we'll be putting out some pointers in terms of schedule uh, for the recap. We'll also be dropping the worksheet uh, that you see here on the screen in terms of branding. Um, if you guys take a look at the competitors at least and just identify some gaps that we can try and fill, we can try and put those in motion for you and develop marketing around that. And the final thing is, uh, for those of you who need it, uh, we'll have a social media consent form um, to, to send out to y'all. I uh, want to thank Wendy uh, for, again, joining us and, and putting, putting on uh, some of these tactics that have really helped a lot of these practices that both of us have worked with. And uh, for everybody who joined us today as well, too, I know time is valuable. And for you to spend that with us uh, on this Friday, we are very, very thankful uh, resources and recordings uh, should be available within 48 business hours. So look forward to that. Uh, thank you uh, personally to everyone who who attended and uh, have a good rest of your day. Make it a 10x day, everybody. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Hey, Dr. Fredo, I saw your uh, comment. I We are going to try and at least have the recordings together uh, in, in the event that someone needs to rewatch it or if there is team members who couldn't make it. Um, so we we want to make sure that we have those on file. So if you need them or if you need to view them in the future, just let us know and we can get you, you accommodated with that. Other than that, everyone have a 10x day.